PC gaming may well be slightly more involved than it is with consoles, but it's hardly difficult, with the added possibilities far outweighing the convenience factor for many, many people. This video though is all about streamlining that experience and making PC gaming as easy and straightforward as it possibly can, and hopefully it will allow you to get rid of those few niggling things that can hold back your experience. And the first point is the most important, and that's to fully understand frame rate and get the right amount of FPS in your games. Now, contrary to popular belief, there is no best frame rate because there are so many different factors at play. You need to balance the settings in your game to get as many frames a second as possible, but the number that you should be aiming for will vary due to your personal circumstances. Take your monitor, for instance. Most gamers will be using a screen with a maximum refresh rate of 60 hertz, so as long as your minimum frame rate never drops below this, there's pretty much no reason to aim higher. Therefore, you'd want to turn up the eye candy and get the most from your graphics card. But then, on the contrary, if you're struggling to hit 40 frames a second and you can turn some of the settings down, then this is probably worth doing. There's also variable refresh rate monitors to consider though, as if you're one of the lucky few that has one of these fancy displays, hitting a fixed 60 FPS isn't actually as necessary as it used to be, and you can run a smooth and stable frame rate from even lower numbers. We do all have our individual preferences, however, and if you're playing a multiplayer game with a mouse and keyboard, then it makes a lot of sense to pick performance over quality pretty much every time. But if you're playing a single player adventure, then frame rate isn't actually as important, especially if you're using a controller. Something that can be a little annoying with a PC though, is just how long it can take to launch a game from a cold boot. But there are a few different ways that you can help to speed up this process to reduce your waiting times. The first is incredibly simple, and all you need to do is reduce the waiting time at the post screen. Simply press the delete key when turning on your computer, find the post delay option, and then change this to a lower value. In my case, this will save me two seconds every single time I turn on my PC, which is good, but not life-changing. This is why once you've hit the desktop, you should type in startup into the Windows search bar, and then change which processes will automatically open up every time you turn on your computer. More powerful PCs that are running solid state drives will be able to load up more applications than the old fashioned hard drives, but there's still no reason to have loads of apps bogging down your gaming computer. I turn off pretty much all the unessential apps like music players, Discord and Skype, and any game suites that I don't use on the daily. So if you only play Fortnite for instance, you won't want Origin, Uplay and Steam all to open at launch as it's just unnecessary. Multiplayer games are pretty much any PC gamer's bread and butter, so make sure you give yourself the best chance to succeed. A common mistake that I see a lot of people making is to use Wi-Fi. Now I totally understand why this would happen as it's very convenient and we've all been using it for years, but it's just not the ideal gaming environment as it can add lag and ultimately reduce your maximum network speed. The best option is always to use a wired ethernet cable plugged directly into your router, but I am aware that this is just not always an option. In this situation, I'd instead point you towards a power line adapter, as this creates a wired connection between your router and computer using the existing electrical wiring that's found within your house's walls. Simply plug one of them into a wall near your router and then the other next to your computer, and use ethernet cables to connect them to your network. It's not quite as good as a direct connection, but it's usually far superior to Wi-Fi, and it's the exact system that I used for four years while at university, and I had very few issues. Now, nobody likes game crashes. They suck, and they can completely lock up your computer. A nifty little tip you can use to help you get out of these issues is to press Control, Shift, and Escape, and yes, Please do this now, then hit options and mark the box that says always on top. And what this will achieve is next time your game crashes, the task manager will appear on top of your crashed game and you should always be able to safely close the game without needing to restart your PC. Now this is not a video I ever wanted to come across as go and spend money, because obviously better kit is, well, better. But if you are going to invest in the PC gaming ecosystem, you want to make an upgrade, then actually it's pretty much always the mouse that I would say is worth doing first because this thing for a lot of people is going to be the difference between you being a good gamer and a bad gamer. Bold claim, but in my case, 
It's certainly true. There's no doubt about it that a good mouse can make you a better player. And if you're using an old hand-me-down from your dad's old iMac, well, you won't believe the difference. My personal favourites are the Logitech G903 and Corsair's M65. The G903 is wireless and it's the best gaming mouse out there for my personal needs. But if I was buying a new setup tomorrow, to be honest, I'd save the extra cash and grab the newest M65, as it is such a joy to use for Apex Legends. If you are interested in grabbing a new gaming mouse, I will leave my Amazon affiliate links down in the description below for suggestions for all of my favourites that can helpfully help you find a new gaming mouse and I guess rack up the kills or if you're playing something peaceful, um, well not kills. If you need that little bit extra performance in games but you don't want to upgrade your graphics card then you can actually download various tools that can give your GPU a little bit of a boost. I'm a fan of EVGA's Precision X and ASUS's GPU Tweak 2 as both of these will allow you to overclock your graphics card for a few extra frames a second. It won't make a huge difference in every single computer, but it is definitely worth looking into. If you're a PC gamer that's rocking multiple drives, then make sure you're installing your games onto the right one, as SSD space is limited, but it can make games and applications run a lot faster. Therefore, anything with a lot of loading screens you should put onto the SSD, whereas all of the others onto the hard drive. And while we're talking about storage, there is actually one other option that really is worth turning on, that can save you a few headaches a little later down the line. As I'm talking about game saves and keeping them safe, by default, most modern games and clients like Steam and Origin will actually automatically back up your saves to the cloud, but this isn't always the case, and with games like Civilization VI, it's actually quite easy to forget and save your games locally. The process to get around this and make sure that you always have them with you is simply to use OneDrive and back up your documents as this is normally where game saves are actually saved to. The files themselves are tiny, and I've actually had quite a few occasions where I've been on the train and my Civ saves weren't actually synced, so I went into OneDrive, restored them, and I could continue where I left off. Let me know your favourite tips and tricks down in the comments section below. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that I haven't picked up, so teach me something new and ultimately help out our community to use their PC even better and more efficiently. I hope you've enjoyed this video though, please hit the like button if it's been useful as this helps out so so much and ultimately get subscribed if you want to see more videos just like this and if you do you can find them in the end screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.